Hello guys, Patrick here, Ragnar Poker. Going to be jumping straight into another video today. We're going to be jumping into the challenge series as we've been doing okay. Let's jump into our graph here. If I can just move this across quickly. Um, as we can see, we are, let me just bring this up so I can see it. We are just currently up $13.47. We uh, have an all adjustment of $15.86 with a current big blind behind 25.42, but that's a little bit exaggerated because we've only played uh, just over two and a half thousand hands here, but it's we're moving in the right direction. So let's jump straight in. Let's get these tables fired up and cracking. So we are still on 2NL. We're going to be trying to grind up to about, let's say between $80 and $100, and then we're going to be taking our first uh, $5 shots five and L shots so that'd be fun just as always guys if you haven't already please like please subscribe please comment on the action as you see it please please um, show your support for the videos and the content the links as always will be in the description for low, uh, below for um, my twitch stream which I will inevitably start I think even with the bad internet I'm probably just going to go ahead and do it at some point hopefully very very soon um, the Discord community is getting a little bit bigger, which is nice, and we're getting more uh, subscribers, obviously, for the channel, and I'm having a blast doing it, and I hope you guys are enjoying the content as we've been going through. Just a quick shout out to anyone who hasn't already noticed, I did do a video yesterday regarding some of the mental game um, parts to the story, so I'm looking at these uh, funny profile pictures. Uh, I did a mental game um, video, which I think is going to be quite useful for a lot of people, so do check that out. Also in the link um, below and uh, check it out and have fun with it. If you haven't subscribed, go and subscribe right now. Join the team. So pure exploitative mindsets of 2NL. Our villain has opened the button. We've defended the ace-9, and we are facing a check back. I think I just want to go ahead and bet. I'm assuming he's not got a very, very strong hand. Maybe some king high, queen highs. Maybe like pocket fives, pocket sevens, and eight. And I'm just going to go ahead and bet for value with my ace. I'm not going to do anything else at all. We're just trying to ex absolutely extract the maximum in every hand we can. We don't need to be super balanced. We don't need to be death um, strategic. We just want to make money, basically. So that's what we're going to be doing. Table so one against a 15 big blind stack. Um, still an easy open with the ace-nine suited, nothing else to say about that. We're easily going to have the best here most of the time, and we are usually going to be c-betting. I don't mind betting and calling off, I don't mind checking. I think both would do fine against 50 big blind stack. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check in position against, against this stack, I suppose. Betting getting shoved on always feels a little bit weird. We still beat loads of hands with our ace high, so we're making an easy call on the turn. And I'm going to be c-betting my king-7, table 2. Kind of hoping this guy just gives up. 8-9 did get there, which we do also block. Um, we don't unblock spades, I suppose, and villain could be doing some random shenanigans. He doesn't go 10x with a jack. We block um, a hand like king-9. We block a hand like 8-9. So villain's basically representing a 9 or some kind of rivered queen. Uh, sorry, a 4 or some kind of rivered queen, or potentially a straight, but there's not really too many straights. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bet very, very small for some thin value on the turn against some flush draws, 8x, etc., and then check back the river table 2 exploitatively. And I'm just going to fold table 1. We could think about potentially calling, but again, villain's tendency in these populations to go for these sort of like double uh, double barrels with pot on the river don't tend to be very bluff heavy. I'm not saying he can't bluff. We do bluff. We do block a straight. We do have some, uh, we don't have any spades in our hand. But uh, I think I'd prefer to call with something a little bit stronger than ace high for a pot size on the river. And I'm going to check about the river. I don't expect to win this. We get rivered, unfortunate, but nice easy check back there. Nothing else to say. Jack 10, not really an open, but we have two recreationals here already previously targeted. So we're going to be exploitatively opening this one. And I'm probably just going to fold the Jack 6. Although we have a recreational and a small blind flatting. So let's call here and see if we can make something work. It's probably a borderline break even defend here, but it's 2 and L, So see what we can do. I'm uh, folding my Jack 6 offsuit. I don't expect the cutoff range to have that many sevens, so if this checks around, I'm just going to go ahead and blast into a lot of likely ace high king highs, and I think the small blind would have potentially led with something value orientated, and we can put pressure on something like fours, threes, some ace highs, king highs, etc. We don't really have any equity, but that doesn't bother me. I'm just going to blast and bet a lot of rivers. I think um, this guy would have led if he had an eight. I think this guy would have bet if he had a good hand, and then when this guy bet, um, checks back and raises turn, like 
the population just doesn't check back like ace ace queen of diamonds and then raise turn but we only have jack high anyway so it's an easy fold but i'm just saying if we did bet something for value there i don't expect to be getting uh semi bluffed a whole bunch at uh two and l when they check back the flop so it would be an easy fold most of the time as well anyway So it's just going to be blasting table two. Uh, sorry, table one. Don't care about ranges. Literally just going to be doing loads of sea bedding with overs and backdoors. Putting a bunch of pressure on loads of other hands. Not really too showdown orientated. So just going to be doing a lot of a lot of pressure. King's a good card for my hand. Against this guy's calling range, it obviously improves king deuce, king nine, king seven. Apart from that, it's not really a whole bunch unless he's floated us with like king queen, king jack, which is probably less likely. But I don't know, but at this level. So just going to target a nine. I'm not going to go huge. I'm just going to go small. Maybe sixes, maybe eights, maybe a seven. Maybe he's got some diamonds, but it's a pretty thin range. So we're just going to go small, try and keep those in. And we're just going to fold to race. It's nice and easy. Populations just do not have enough check raise bluffs. They just absolutely don't have enough check raise bluffs. So it's a nice easy fault. Especially to that size as well. I promise you at 2NL, villains do not go high. You bet three, you're probably small and not going to raise. They literally just do what they do with their own two cards. If you've turned diamonds and you've bluffed me, then well done. But it's n I'm not making massive hero calls because it's absolutely not the way to beat this stake. It's unfortunately just not. Going to be betting uh, a little bit bigger on table two with our 10. Can open the king seven and defending the ace three suited table two versing leads we again it's kind of similar to the last hand uh sorry from the lot um, the last hand of the previous video that we did um some of our um rivet hands like if we we could potentially turn a seven we could turn a king both of those improve some of villains range like king queen um some queen nines etc so it's kind of a bad hand to use as a float or a raise so i'm just gonna let that one go Although it's still mostly value heavy and we do block some of the semi bluffs anyway, but still I'm not going to be raising that lead. Uh, I didn't actually mean to open 6-4. That is a hotkey mistake, but YOLO. Get punished for it, Sag. Uh, checking table one after C betting uh, ace 5-5. Five five. Kind of a gross spot because villains just don't bluff. It's really kind of tilting. Uh, when he flats, flats the flop. Like, we still beat something like four, sevens, eights, which these kind of weird fishy people do bet with sometimes when check two. So I'm going to call one. If he bets the river as well, I don't expect him to do so with those hands. Then I'm just going to probably just give up. Uh, probably fold. For this size, oh, this is really, really frustrating. This is just never going to be anything other than a really shit ace. That's just chopping with the jack and trying to keep me in. No, you have it, mate. If anything, if he was going to bluff, I think he would just go all in, personally. I'm not looking to um, just call down at all. I treat everyone like a child. Everyone's going to have a really strong value range, which they do, unfortunately. And we're just going to literally bet for value or bluff. And that's all I'm going to do. Ace-8's got some pretty good backdoor properties, so I don't mind raising this one, potentially. Let's go ahead and raise. We could also just call. But I think at this stake, I prefer against people who just see bet almost their entire range 100% of the time. I would prefer just to raise population. And when we get a uh, three bet on the flop, it's just, again, just a really easy fold. Very boring, but it's just very, very simple. Everyone's just a massive fucking nit, so we're going to treat them like so. Folding the tin deuce. And the king deuce. We can three battle call. Um, both are completely fine. Table one. You can see recreation. I actually prefer calling, honestly, uh, rather than sort of three betting twice. So it works both ways because um, uh, flopping flush is always nice. I could raise. I could go ahead and raise directly or call uh, exploitatively. Um, you know what? Let's call the flop. I was going to say um, against. Um, 
recreationals in the early positions, I tend to do a lot more flatting. Uh, I'm going to be raising the turn and be looking to shove river. And we're just folding versus 4-bet on table 2. It's really easy. These people don't have 4-bet bluffs, so ace-10 of clubs is just annihilated and we're not calling. Um, easy shove table 1 for a pot size with the nuts. It's kind of weird that this guy um, bet bet calls, so I'm assuming he probably had something like... I don't really know, to tell you the truth. Probably had something like queen-jack with the queen of clubs that he's merging on the turn. 3-bet ace-9 suited... Yeah, my 3-bit um, percentage is going to be extremely polar. So I'm basically polarizing with really, really nutted hands and really weak hands. So I'm doing way more flatting than theoretically I should be um, because it's just going to work at these stakes. Like, I don't care about the rake. Can, can, I, I can beat the rake better by um, playing in position with a lot of really, really, really good hands against um, the, the population. We'll be usually playing 4-bet or fold. Um, okay, yeah, this guy's 4-bet, so we'll be folding. But against this sort of 3-bet, stre strategically, a lot of 3-betting and 4-betting uh, and folding is good. But against um, a 9x that's attacking under the gun at 2 and L, I would just be folding. I, I would literally just be folding. I wouldn't give it any kind of consideration. Um, we're just going to go ahead and barrel uh, table 2. It's gonna I'm going to probably just triple, to be honest. Blocking pocket nines is somewhat quite good because um, that's one of his probably primary calls, like nines, tens, jacks. That doesn't fall back potentially, so that's not bad. Uh, defending my ace ten, kind of not thrilled that this guy bets three x. Probably going to check raise a lot of my range on table one because at these stakes people just don't open enough low cards, and then they see about their entire range way too often. Um, when this guy checks back, he's going to have loads of ace x, so it's good slash bad. If he's got a hand like a six of clubs, it's really good. If he's just got a value ace x, it's really bad. Obviously, we're not folding river unless he nukes. If he pots 10 x or uh, ten big blinds or bigger, he's going to win. No, he's going to win. Nice hand because these people don't go for eighty percent. With enough bluffs, and when they do it, they um, but, sorry, and their value is beating ace ten. He's not going to go ten big blinds here with ace nine, ace seven. So there you go, nice easy sizing tell. We can get away from that, save ourselves ten big blinds. Can he be bluffing there? No, to be honest, just 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 say no. It's two and L, five and L, ten and L. Unless you know someone's extremely extremely good, they're not. They're just going to sit there and have the nuts most of the time and do some weird shitty bluffs. So you can just get away from them. We'd be calling a decent amount of hands blind on blind against three bets, but four five suit is a really shit one to defend. Flop top pair table two blind on blind. I am going to raise this for value, and I'll will probably just get this in because I know he can have worse hands. Uh, he can have some king jacks, queen jacks, ten jacks, some obviously some um, flush draw pair and flush draw etc. Blind on blind, I'm happy to three bet get that in. So as always, our mentality is we're just going to be that little bit more aggressive in terms of seabedding. We're going to be that little bit more aggressive whenever we've got the opportunity to do any bluffing or semi-bluffing. We're going to be quite... Uh, did I just fold pocket nines there? I didn't mean to. If I did, I think I had 8-9 offsuit. If I had 8s or 9s, I'm a, knit, I'm a fish. If I had 8-9 offsuit, I think that's what I was supposed to be folding. Um, but against um, 2 and a population on stars, like it's just absolute death nets. Like, it really, really is. We're running well, table one. Um, it's just, like not to sound really nasty and entitled, but it's just like versing a bunch of children who are just sitting there waiting for the nuts. And you, if this is why I don't want to play these stakes, but as part of this challenge, uh, I am going to do so. And I'm not going to raise this. I'm just going to call. I'm probably going to check call turn because I don't want to scare him off with his like nines, his tens, his queens, etc. So nine, ten comes in, backdoor flushes come in, this guy checks turn. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bet two thirds against like queens, I'm going to bet two thirds against tens. If this guy raises, I'm going to fold because he's got flushes, he's got pocket sevens, things like that, that he checks back. And I can still get value from nines, tens, queens, kings. Very, very rare that he might have something like, I don't know, jack nine that decided not to bet the turn, but... I'm not going to bet small, I'm just going to bet big. And then um, fold to raise. So villain bets, table one, checks to us. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to over bet, and then we're going to bet the turn. This guy's just going to have loads of king jacks. He's going to have loads of 10 nines. He's going to have loads of ace three. And he's just so capped, he's just absolutely unable to um, withstand a lot of these over bets and big bets on multiple streets. Doesn't have enough bluffs, so... If he does, if he's trapping me, well done, good good on him. But if not, we're just going to put pressure on him now. Uh, with a recreational calling here, I'm going to continue calling behind with the ace nine suited. I'm kind of prioritizing this guy as my value. So I'm not looking strategically. I'm just playing basically my hand and my spot. There you go. This guy tanked and folded. He literally had ace deuce. He had 10 jack. He had king jack. He's capped. We bend him next. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, 
So initial raise of bet, and we've got this guy betting half pot. Because this is a fish, I mean, we are four-handed, but I'm not folding top pair directly. Can probably bet some hands like king 10, queen 10, queen jack. He might even bet a worse ace here. I think we can only call and see how the action develops. Opening the a7 suited. Pretty bad turn card. This guy's going to have a bunch of ace jacks, queen jacks, king jacks, pocket tens, jack ten. So, so this guy too, as we identified. Because I've got a hand like top pair, I'm not going to turn this into a bluff. Even though I probably could in theory. It's just I think both have like a ten enough of the time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check back this turn with top pair. If it checks round again, I'm literally going to pot the river to try and attack like king jack, queen jack. If they bet the river, they're going to win. That's what I'm going to do. There you go. They bet, we fold. To be fair, we could have potentially looked at bluffing, over bluffing turn anyway, but I think I wanted to just see what both players did on the river before we decided doing any shenanigans. Uh, I'm going to see bet table two. I could, in, again, in theory, we're mostly checking here, but I really don't care. I just want to bet, basically, because it's going to it's gonna net me more EV in the long run than checking will at these stakes. Easy fold with the 9-5 off suits. Pocket aces, that's a good hand. Probably going to play that one. 8-6, easy pitch. Let's raise that one up. Maybe even could have just gone bigger, to be honest. Like 4x would have been decent against a wreck here, but it's fine. Finally starting to gather a little bit of data and it's just basically confirming in my soul this stake. Everyone's sitting here on like an 18, 13, 19, 14, those kind of things. Like everyone just basically has it and sits here in pedals and it's really boring and miserable. You just have to endure it and not be able to do anything about it. We will be doing some, uh, even if I had a hand like five, six suits, six, seven suits, I would only be calling a very small amount of the time. Gapped low connectors are absolutely trash. So just get rid of those. If you're getting three bet, especially on the button, small blind, doesn't matter. Just get rid of them. Guy flat in the hijack is probably a recreational. This is not the best board to go ahead and bet on. Um... I think if I had a diamond, I'd like to go ahead and bet, or if I had a direct gut shot. So I don't mind checking here, multi-way, because we're three-handed. Good turn card, we're only losing to queen nine. King, queen, if they have them on the turn, just going to bet big. It's annoying to have the jack of clubs, because we block um, ten jack, we block queen ten, um, we block club draws, etc. Um, six, seven comes in, flushes come in. That's not going to stop us. Again, because we've got two recreations, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bet um, just under a third, try and target like um, a worst king, basically, or like nine, ten, something like that, that we can get called by. Again, if we get raised, there you go, you win. How easy is that? This guy has absolutely no check raise bluffs. So it's so easy to bet for value and fold. It's just so easy. The game is ridiculously easy. Six, seven also came in, diamonds came in. So it's just really, really easy. If you can maintain that discipline, like, yeah, it's really shitty. But if you can maintain that discipline, you'll just absolutely de demolish these micro, abs the lowest of micro stakes in the super tight environments. You can only play somewhat normal um, poker against people who actually play normal poker, and none of these people do. Not to sound nasty, but it's just a fact. Like, do you think that guy's going to check shove for 50 bigs with, a, with anything other than a flush? Fuck no. So I'm not going to call, am I? Uh, folding 6-3, easy open, queen jack off. I don't mind bluffing the queen 10 off, it's a bit outrageous, but it doesn't matter, because I'd rather do outrageous bluffs and outrageous faults than calls. Easy open, though. Uh, he's going to be betting, probably betting a little bit bigger on this one. Just take it down, always taking it down. No one ever defends. We get check raised because they've got a massive hand or they just fold or they call with some kind of weird capped range. Do, 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 do. Marking up, marking up, opening the king jack off. 
Easy check with 9-7 off. We flopped absolutely nothing. If it if this guy checks back and he bet, and this guy checks turn, we might do some shenanigans. Uh, versus lead, just going to fold. So in terms of seabedding, one this is exploitative, right? But because people don't exploit us, we can use this strategy. Because we've got a really decent hand, we can still bet here with middle pair and a gut shot, but I am just going to check back, and then we it just makes the game a little bit easier. If this guy wants to bet, he can bet. Um, it's completely fine. I'm going to be calling. And I'm going to be calling. There you go. He wins. But it's just that simple. Like, I'm not worried about a backdoor flush the way this play, um, hand is played. I'm not worried about... I mean, I'm more worried about a nine, I suppose, than a queen. And I'm not looking to make big hero calls. But it's when we check back the flop, it makes calling turns and rivers very, very easy. We also do technically block flushes. But again, that's why he's a recreational. He gets 10 big blinds there. That's all he gets. And then he goes on and loses. So, whereas we just keep chugging along. Chugging along. Folding 10 6. Easy fold 7 5. Folding 9 deuce. Folding 9 7. Fold, 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 fold. By the way, just a thing. That guy there, he had top pair. How do you know? He bet, he bet, pressed the pot button. And then he actually bet the river. So what a fucking surprise. You had a good hand. You see? I don't mean to sound boring and stubborn, but it's kind of the same thing over and over again, isn't it? Um, So in a limp pot multi-way, I actually don't mind leading this gut shot. So let's go ahead and lead. Probably going to bet the flop and make a decent size shell on the turn and then give up river. I think that'd be better. Get called by a three, fold out a three on the turn. Get called by a six, fold out a six on the turn. We block four five, so we actually get there, which is funny. I'm actually look, just take a moment. We actually got there, guys. So I'm over betting. I was going to over bet anyway, but we're efficient folding top pair. So let's go ahead and bet, and let's raise for value with our ace king. This guy's not folding two pair on the turn. He's not folding a king on the turn. He's not folding a flush draw on the turn. He's not folding a pair and a straight draw on the turn. So against a recreational, we are just over betting for pure value. That's all we're doing. He's not going to fold any of that. He's just going to absolutely call. He floated. He missed. He, he folded. That's it. Easy, easy, easy. Min raise here. Um, again, I never know how to interpret it. This guy could just have like a seven offsuit or he could just have aces. Like, who knows? Going to open five, six here. I don't care about RNG because we've got two recreations. So I'm going to open. Just going to call the min raise. Um, that's all I'm going to do. These guys' ranges are so capped towards nasty overpairs anyway. doesn't matter what sizing they choose. Like, this is almost never a bluff either. It's more likely just to be a pocket queens or pocket jacks. So, do we get to see it? Maybe we'll find out. We do. Oh, look, it's aces. What a surprise. I'm a really good player. I know what's going on. Uh, very dry board. Let's go ahead and bet. I think big size is nice. So, when these people call from the big blind, yeah, I mean, he can absolutely have a hand like a three. He can have a nine. He can have seven, sixes. I was going to say he can also have a hand like pocket eights. Sevens and sixes and fives fold. Deuces will fold. Some spade and diamond floats will fold. Um, Because I have absolutely no equity, and I think eights improves his range and backdoor hearts develop. I'm going to check the turn, and then I'm probably going to bluff. Or do I just want to bet? Um, no, I think he's like kind of very pair heavy. So like blasting the turn is probably not that great. And also we have no equity. This is a really good river. We're going to be bluffing this river. So versing lead, this is really weird. I suppose you can have some like queen 10 of diamonds. You can have some like king queen of spades, which you may have floated. Against this lead, I have more hands like pocket queens, but I would have probably bet the turn, right? So I'm basically saying I have a huge queen. So that's what I'm saying. I'm going to bin this bastard. You can lead mate with your queen 10 and your queen jack. And let's see if you decide. I don't think he leads here with like a set of eights. If he leads here with a nine, we're just going to bin him. There you go. See ya. Not saying that's a very good bluff strategically, but in these stakes, I'm just absolutely binning that stupid lead. Um, I don't know what to do here. This guy's jammed for 10x pot. You know what? No, I'm just going to fold. These people are children. Do I think he has eight, nine? Do I think he has king, queen? No, I really don't, to be honest. If he had king, jack or queen, jack there and decided to jam 10x pot, then he, you know, he wins and, you know, good for him. But I'm just looking to not take massive variant spots. Like, this isn't a challenge. This is me literally just being miserable 24-7 and telling you how to beat 
extremely high rake environment definity pulls until you have information on players treat everyone like they just have the nuts most of the time because they do anyway and like i could call there and i'm probably ahead some of the time and it's like not great to fold but at the same time like i promise you after hundreds of thousands of hands previously playing these stakes in this specific pool over the years like that's just a really good hand and people don't tend to play like queen jack king jack for 10x pot shoves they shove to um, top pair top kicker they shove um, two pairs they shove sets for example so it's like i just don't want to take the variance route i really don't it's uh it's no problem to me so i'm gonna bet really really big on the turn or am i gonna check on table one i'm not sure facing this min four bet no this is just aces and kings if this guy had made a decent size four bet, I would have continued. But because he made a min four bet, UTG versus hijack, I know what that is. I know that's aces or kings. So I'm not going to entertain it. Table one. So we're just going to check back and lose here because this guy's blatantly... When he goes triple check, yeah, we can actually just win. So checking is fine. I didn't want to bet the turn because I think he's got a lot of pair and draws. And he can sometimes have some traps here. I suppose in this population, they don't three bet enough ace queen either. We're just going to lose to like queen 10, aren't we? Okay, we can beat ace five. Um, I was always checking, but I'm just saying I'm not expecting to win very often. And I don't think re um, betting would have been that great. I'm not the biggest fan of bombing that turn and then uh, bombing River to try and get him off one pair because I know he's not folding the turn. So, I mean, I could have done, but our hand just beats some hands technically, right? So it's probably not the best, uh, not the best candidate to use technically. Um, Apologies, I'm getting spam texts. Um, against a recreational limp, we've got 5-3 offsuit. I'm not going to raise this. Let's see a flop. And with the recreational here, I'm not 3 the 10-6 suited. Uh, fuck it, let's call. Let's see if we can do some damage. Going to check bottom pair here. I'm not going to lead. I'm just going to check again. Can I get any value out of a pair of threes with no kicker? No. Uh, no, this would be a bit ridiculous to bet a pair of threes for value. So considering this is checked round and I blocked queen 10, I picked up a flush draw, I am just going to go ahead and overbet. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say I have a really good hand. I'm trying to bin like queen jack. I'm trying to bin like king 10. I'm trying to bin a hand like pocket 10s, those type of things. I don't really care about range. I'm literally just seeing what's in front of me. These guys have all checked. I picked up some equity. I blocked some of the nut value of opponents unfolding. It's just really easy. We could defend the pocket fives, but because this idiot decides to bet nine and a half big blinds as a three bet, he's just going to win, isn't he? If he makes some ridiculous size, I'm not interested. If he made it a, a genuine normal size, then I might be interested in calling some of the time. Apologies if I sound a little bit miserable today. I'm not. I'm just doing the video and it's just one of these videos where it's like there's not a whole bunch of value it's just me sitting here um what do i want to do here with table one i suppose i just want to keep blasting don't i really yeah let's go ahead and do it ace king suit table one get massive value out of that <laughs> see how often we just take it down guys just just betting see betting is just really good at two and l Easy fold ace eight. Won't be three betting deuces if the button opens. Uh, spawn this guy up. If I can do it. Folding my eight five. Gonna be going for about another two or three minutes, guys, and then we're gonna be done. I'm gonna exploit Tivoli min open because this guy here's got 23 bigs. It doesn't make a whole bunch of difference, but it just disincentivizes this guy. If I go like two and a half, it, it just, it, between two and two and a half does make a slight difference on his um, choices between raising and how big he raises, for example. Uh, folding the jack 10. Sorry, table two. Is this a big scary king? That looks like a C-bet to us. So the seven of hearts isn't that great. Obviously, flushes come in. We don't have any equity. Uh, I'm going to ch probably check back the turn and bluff river if he checks. Try and get him off something like 
pocket fives, pocket fours, pocket sixes, a three, maybe a hand like eight, nine offsuit. I'm not expecting this guy to fold a king, by the way, just as a disclaimer. Nor should he. And I'm not overbetting either. I, I mean, actually, technically, I, I could overbet, and overbetting probably would have been better there, actually. But I just don't think he's going to fold a king, and I think he's going to fold an eight to like an 80% bet rather than, you know, I don't think I have to go overbet to make that fold. I'm going to check back table two on the mono. Turn a straight, which is quite funny. I'm just going to bet a third, and I'm going to check back the river. That's what I'm going to do. Gonna try and get called by like 5-4. Gonna try and get called by um, anything at all. When we get men raised, guess what? We're just gonna fold. It's really easy. This guy's got the king of diamonds, the queen of diamonds, the three of diamonds. He wins. He's a really good player. Checking back that turn would have also been fine, but I literally feel like I can get value out of a straight on a, on, on a um, monotone turn at this, at this stake. And I'm just not being bluffed. So I just really don't care when I get raised. I'm not really bidding myself. I am literally betting for value. And this gentleman's telling me how good his hand is. And I'm not going to pay. I'm going to check my ace jack. I've got a nice hand that can check call. And return second pair. Guess what? Easy call. If this guy bets the river, I'm going to fold. He's going to win. No. I'm not entertaining it. This guy's literally just got like king eight offsuit. You win, bro. Again, if he was going to bluff, he probably wouldn't go 25%, would he? He's just going, oh, it's a flush. Oh, I've only got a bet small so I can get value. No, you're not getting called, bro. You are not getting called. Easy folds with the eight sevens. This guy's a death net, so if he's tanking a three betting, guess what we're doing? I'll give you a clue, it's not four betting. Opening the king eight. Oh look, we've got three bet, what surprise you win. Nice tank. That guy's got over 300 hands and his three bet percentage is one, so that doesn't give me too much confidence in defending my ace line suited, does it? Um, what have we got here? We've got the Jack-3 offsuit and the 10-9. Uh, give me a second. What have we got here? Mark these guys up. Going to defend my 10-9. Uh, uh. Is my hand good enough to go for value? At this stake, I would say yes. I would probably just bet small, bet small. Try and target an 8, try and target 9, 7, 6 is 5, some ace highs. We just bet very, very small. I'm not saying it's the best strategic play, but I think, again, at these stakes, it's just going to make more money, isn't it? So I'm just going to do it. Go ahead and do that. Same with table one. Betting this board's a bit silly, really, but it doesn't really matter. It's just going to net so much more money. We turn a gut shot and a flush draw. I'm not going to check and let him check back and make it hard to bluff on rivers. I'm literally just going to go ahead and double barrel the turn. Assuming this guy is going to continue with 8-9. He's going to continue with a 10. Some turn flush draws. And if he does call, I'd probably just give up, to be honest. Two easy recreationals on table two, so I'm going to open my jack 10 off. Um, not defending the seven deuce. Table two, because I've got no heart in my hand, and I've got two unders, no overs. I'm not going to decide to see about this one. Even though maybe it doesn't even matter. Maybe Z betting pure is probably better, to be honest, because this just happens over and over again. These Pepe's just bet 100% of the time when they get checked to, and it's just really hard to play. But who knows? Easy fold, Jack 8. We'll have a ridiculously high fold to 3 bet, by the way, at this stake, but it is actually part of a really strong winning strategy, I promise you. Because people just don't people just don't exploit it, and the people who are exploiting it won't exploit it properly anyway. And if anything, that you know, what they make an extra one or two big blinds here and there, but the times you've got a really, really good hand, you make more, so it's... I wouldn't worry about it, honestly. Uh, defending a7 could potentially through that. 
and I will be calling the flop. Again, people just kind of see back their entire range. Versus check, um, I don't really know, to be honest. I really, really don't know actually what's better. I think a7's a bit silly to start turning into a bluff. But then again, like, it kind of comes under the question of does this guy just check all better ace highs and then the times he's got, like, ace four, ace three, ace six, slash king, queen, king, jack, he just bets. So let's just go ahead and bet. I'm going to make a big bet and I'm probably going to bet turn. So we're just, we're targeting, like, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, forcing them to try and fold rather than giving them a good opportunity to float. Um, because we've got two wrecks here, I don't want to isolate this guy and fold these guys out. I'm going to call in position. Fuck the rake. I don't care. Opening Queen Jack here with all the wrecks. Flop a gut shot. Uh, I don't want to bet fold this, so I'm going to be checking back. Turning second pair, but that's a wobbly second pair. With three diamonds, because we're multi-way, I'm probably just going to fold. This guy could potentially still have a king. And these guys could have potentially turned hands like queens, queen, jack. Yeah, I think we're just going to check turn. If this checks around a third time, I'm probably going to bet one, one and a half big blinds for value. Yeah, I'm going to do that. One point five is nice. Might be a bit thin. We'll find out. But I think we can still get called by like queen, ten, ace, jack. We're never getting binned, so... Okay, apparently we are getting binned. Well done. But again, how often do you get check raised multi way as a bluff at 2 and L? You tell me. Uh, folding my 9 deuce. And we've got loads of wrecks. So guess what we're doing? We're opening the 5 6 eight. We've actually run over, I've just realized, you know what, screw it, let's go to 40 minutes. Let's have another three minutes. Let's fold this king seven. And raise the uh, queen jack suited. And go ahead and see about table one. Again, because we've got recreational here, ugh, this guy's up. So I've got just under 100 hands. This guy's opening 7%. No, I'm not going to free bet him. Just just ridiculous, isn't it? Check. If this guy C bets, he's we're dead. If this guy doesn't bet, he's just capped as fuck. I was going to say, a hand like Ace Queen could just be winning, though. So I wouldn't have bluffed that. We do turn top pair, which is nice on table two. Debating whether to check raise or check call. Because we're multi-way, I think it's better to check call. At least the turn and see what happens. So this guy's just got like tens or something. I think we've got this guy beat a lot of the time. I think he would have bet ace jack or ace nut. Oh well, not ace nut. But I think he would have bet ace jack on the turn. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this for value. I'm not going to go big. I'm just going to get a little bit more value out of ace qu uh, ace ten. I'm going to get a little bit more value out of like ace eight suited. Going to get a little bit more value out of something like that. And then I'm not going to go massive. I'm just going to go a size that I think ace 10 will call. Something like half pot I think is nice. We block queen 10. I don't think he has that. Could even just have the same hand. I'm just going to absolutely go. For, by the way, I, I'm just going to go for the thinnest value wherever I can find it, guys. Because I'm in pure exploitative mode. All right, let's come on to 39 minutes. Let's sit out on the next big blind for both hands, and then we'll be done. Let's fold the green five. We could defend the four three suited against a min open. Flop a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Could check raise this, could check call. We do technically have queens in our range, by the way, if anyone's wondering. Let's call this time. Could lead this turn. I actually like do leading. I do like leading. So Exposed to, so, um, sorry, strategically, we actually have way more sevens as well. So we could lead. We could lead for about like 20, 30%. I'm actually going to go for a bit of a bigger bet. I think half pot's nice. If we get raised, well, we get raised. But the seven is just such a good card for us, isn't it? I'm not going to go ahead and bet 20% because that that does induce raises, if anything. Um, bl both bluffs and value. 
And then when we um as we're playing, sorry, as we're playing exploitative, I think it's better to go like sort of half pot. If he raises us, he raises us, but I don't think he does. Gets a bunch of folds. We will take it. And we're done. Excellent. So let's have a look at the growth table one. Uh, sorry, um, going over to screen one. So results for today. Give me one second. Okay, so we are currently down 23 cents for today. <laughs> we'll take it. There we go. Thank you guys, as always. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, not the most fun or interesting session in this one. It's been a bit boring, to be quite honest. Just not really getting a whole bunch of value, having to do loads of ridiculously tight folds. But honestly, like, I, it just works. It really does. Like, it... As you can see, this is basically a stale session for a couple of hundred hands, and we basically broke even, whereas we just have any type of value, and we just absolutely skyrocket. And just avoiding stupid um, stupid cooldowns, really. Even marginal ones is just the way to go. Anyway, so as always, hope you enjoyed it. Please like, please comment, and please press that subscribe button. At least half of you watching this right now are not subscribed, so go get subscribed right now. And I will record a new one. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow is Thursday. Um... Yeah, I think we'll do some 25 and L as I promised last time. So I'll see you in the next one.